Introducing Zenith, the modern trailer archetype. A library packed full of modern, heart-hitting sounds that will add power, punch and impact to any production. Let's take a closer look at what the library has to offer. At its core, Zenith is made up of seven instrument categories, 22 instruments, 19 FX modules, 28 impulse responses and just over 500 WAV files. Zenith comes with three engines – a main engine, an effects engine and a stutter engine. Let's start with the main engine. The main engine of Zenith was designed with a functionality-first approach. We wanted to give you instant access to all the most important modules directly from one screen. This was key to creating an intuitive user experience that helps to speed up your overall workflow. In the center of the engine is the powerful multi-effects knob. With a simple turn, this will add extra polish, bite and energy to your sound. Down the left-hand side, you have an ADSR to control the overall envelope shape of each sound. Below this is the filter section, where we've included a high and low pass filter. This is a good time to mention that every parameter in Zenith can be assigned to a MIDI controller of your choosing by simply right-clicking the parameter. Next in line is the reverse button. This function is great for reversing any sound to create an instant reverse symbol or riser effect. Beside this is your start knob. This allows you to easily move the starting point of any sample, which can be seen in the waveform visualizer. Also, with instrument categories that come with multiple instruments, we've included an instrument browser to quickly navigate between sounds and audition the perfect part. In the lower right-hand corner, you have a playback mode selector. Playback types that are included are monophonic, polyphonic and glide. Above this are your delay and reverb modules. Simply turn on the power button to engage the effect and dial in your desired settings. The delay module is fully synced with your DAW and as mentioned before, the convolution reverb comes loaded with 28 impulse responses making it very easy to transport your sound into any space. Moving down to the keyboard section. From D-2 to D-0 are where the key switches are located. This will allow you to easily change the pitch of any sound. The green keys to the right are all your playable keys. Press these to trigger the samples within the instrument. In the Whoosh Hits and Booms instruments, you'll find an impact button just above the waveform visualizer. When engaged, this will eliminate the whoosh part of the sound and leave you with just the impact. This is great for layering with other percussion libraries to get that larger-than-life sound. Lastly, in the Epic Trailer Kit, we've included a fast playing button. This will tighten up your low end when performing fast drum patterns. Now that we've covered the main engine, let's move over to the FX engine. The FX engine comes with six daisy-chained effects modules and 17 FX processors. This is where you can really mangle and manipulate your sound. Some of the effects included are saturators, stomp pedals, reverbs, compressors and a ton more. Each FX module comes with a power button and reset button. The power button will bypass the module and the reset button will reset it back to its default state. Across the bottom of the engine are some utility functions. The save button allows you to save any multi-effects chain as a preset into your desired folder. The load button allows you to recall any of your saved presets at any time. The bypass button will bypass all effects modules at once. Lastly. The reset button acts as a master reset function and clears the entire effects engine back to its default state. Now let's jump over to the stutter engine. This engine is comprised of three parts, stutter, filter and pan. This engine is perfect for instantly creating motion or movement to your sound and getting that classic stuttered riser effect heard in almost every movie trailer. The stutter section will apply a tremolo effect to your sound. 
At its peak, the sample will play back at full volume. And at its lowest point, the sample will not be heard. The filter section will apply a low-pass filter to your sound. All the way up, and the filter is wide open. Whereas at the bottom, the max filter properties are applied. The pan section will allow you to adjust the amount of panning on each step of the stutter. The center position will keep your sound in the middle of the stereo field. All the way up will put it 100% left. And all the way down will place your sound 100% to the right. Down the right-hand side, each section comes with a random and reset button. The reset button will reset the section back to its default state. And the random button will apply values at random to the selection steps. At the top of the stutter engine, there's a playback selector. This comes with five different playback modes as seen here. At the bottom of the engine is where the master control section can be found. The steps knob will allow you to select how many steps you want the stutter engine to play back. The engine allows for a maximum of 16 steps. The speed knob will control the note value of the playback speed and is fully synced to your DAW. The utility controls in the stutter engine act the exact same way as the buttons found in the effects engine. If you want to learn more about the individual instruments, then you can check out the video titled Track Walkthrough. For more information on Zenith, head over to cinematictools.com. Take care and thanks so much for watching.